Hey everybody, it's Joe here, and we are so stoked that you're joining us for week three of your connection group. We're in the middle of a series called Four Letter Words, and today we're gonna to be talking through this massive four letter words, maybe you've heard it, the word hell. So hey, here's two of my friends, Josh and Mike, and they're gonna unpack this word for you today. Hey guys, Josh here and Mike. Uh, we're back on our series. Today we are talking about hell. Yeah. Mike, can you say a little bit more about that? Absolutely. It's a fun word, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, hell That's is... It's a hella good word. <laughs> I saw what you did there. <laughs> um, I think this word hell is interesting because we use it in phrases like you just did. Sure. Like, I, I did that for the hell of it. Mm -hmm. um, or, or what the hell, you know, and it's Mike, usually... what the hell? Yeah, it's usually in a, in a, in a negative context, but it's usually with a, I'm exasperated, okay. I'm frustrated, but the word literally means without. I had no thought, mm -hmm. so you know I did it for the hell of it. Okay. Or what the hell, you didn't put thought into that. There's a lack of something missing when we use that phrase or we use that word. That's what we're actually referencing. There's something that's missing here. Yeah. Uh, is that in the Bible anywhere? It is this in the word? Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Can you <Exactly>. say? <laughs> that's good. Can you say more about what is like the the perspective on Scripture? What does it say? Is there one view? Oh, hell, that, that's, that's a good question. Is there more than one? Yeah, that's a good question. There is actually a few different views. I would personally land in what's called the Orthodox view, which is that there is actual an actual place called hell. Um, there are some that believe that this place lasts for eternity. There are some that believe that this place doesn't last for eternity, that those that go there are those that don't know God, and then they go there and then they're dead for all time. Hmm. And then there are those that don't believe in hell at all, that it's actually just figurative in the Bible, meaning that at the end, love wins, God wins, that everybody who has ever existed gets to be in the presence of God. Mike, in scripture, is there a story that tells a bit more about this word? Hell? Yeah, yeah. In Luke chapter 16, actually, verse 19, Jesus tells a story about a rich man and about Lazarus. And many call it the parable of rich man and Lazarus. But there's some theologians that believe that it's not a parable, and here's why. A parable is a made-up story with true principles, and Jesus would assign people during that time to the characters in the story, and they could learn from it. In this story, he does something unique. He actually gives names to the major players in this story, the rich man and Lazarus. And here's how the story goes. That there was a rich man who had everything and didn't have any sort of need in life. He had everything that he wanted. And then there was a poor man named Lazarus, and he would eat from the rich man's scraps from his table. Both die, and the story tells us that the rich man goes to a place called hell, which the word is Gehenna in the Hebrew language, and that Lazarus actually goes to Abraham's bosom, which is another way to describe heaven. And Abraham is there because he is a man of God, he's the prophet of God, and the nation of Israel comes from him. And then something unique happens. There's a discussion between the rich man in hell and Abraham and Lazarus in heaven. The rich man requests of Abraham to have the man Lazarus, the poor man, dip his finger in some water, reach across from heaven into hell, and drop that drip of water onto his tongue because he says that he is in agony in this fire. And Abraham responds and says, that can't happen. There's a chasm between you and I, and that thing just can't take place. So then the rich man says, okay, Abraham, what if we had Lazarus go back to earth and tell my brothers about how horrible this place is so that they will acknowledge God? And Abraham responds with, they're not gonna do that. He's not gonna do that. They have the law and the prophets. They have all of the knowledge and they can either accept it or reject it. So then the rich man in hell gets really fired up and he says, no, Father Abraham, this is not how it should be. I want someone to rise from the dead and to tell my brothers about this place and to tell my brothers about your place. And Abraham says something really powerful. He says, even if someone rises from the dead, they will not believe it. And that's how the story ends. So last week we actually talked and shared through a parable and already in the telling of Luke 16, we can see this difference, right? Yeah. Names are being attached. Yeah. Can you say a little bit more about why this uh, rich guy basically is trying to get the guy from heaven to do him a favor. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Like he didn't care for him when he was on this earth. Sure, gave him now, scraps. Gave him scraps from his table. 
And now he's asking for favors from this guy. Mm-hmm. And he's making the request to Abraham, who is you know, the father of nations. And, and they all call him Father Abraham because they all came from him. And he's asking for, really, this rich man is asking for Lazarus to serve him. And the first thing he asks is, hey, could you give him some water on my tongue? And Abraham says, no. And then he says, could he go back? And could he do this for me? Essentially, what we find from this, this rich man is, right. I didn't serve him on earth. And now, in, in death, sure. in, in, in the afterlife, I'm demanding that he serve me. So he's still, in his perspective, he's still superior over this poor man. And really, his superiority was just his personal wealth. It wasn't anything else other than that. And yet he demeaned him on earth, and now he's asking Abraham, hey, would it be a a great thing, a good thing, if this guy did these things for us? But Abraham's response is really interesting. He says, there's a chasm between us, and I can't go there, and you can't come here. And obviously, we think through like, okay, chasm. Maybe it's like the Grand Canyon. Maybe there's a giant cliff. But I think what Jesus wants us to see in this story is not a physical gap between heaven and hell, but that the gap is actually in the rich man's heart. Right. Because I didn't serve you on earth, and now in the afterlife, I'm demanding that you serve me because I'm better, Right. I have more resource, I'm stronger, whatever it might be, I want you to now serve me. So really, the chasm, I think is in the heart sure. of the rich man. And it almost seems like he's got an unawareness yes. of where he is, yeah. right? Yeah, some theologians actually have said that hell is not locked from the outside in, that it's actually locked from the inside out, mm. that we make the decisions to actually be in hell. And often, and I've been a church guy forever, came to know Jesus at eight years old, old born and raised in the church, And often we can see hell as just this literal, physical place. And like I said earlier, I'm orthodox in that, so I believe that there is a literal, physical place. But that's not really what Jesus wants us to know in this story. What Jesus wants us to know in this story is that we choose to live in either heaven or we choose to either live in hell. It was the words of Jesus, actually, when he was teaching the disciples how to pray. He said, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So our job is to bring heaven to earth because Mm -hmm. Jesus brought heaven to earth. And in this story particularly, he is emphasizing that even in hell, this rich man is not aware of the decisions that he's making and how he's demeaning other people, how he's not extending love. Essentially, we defined hell at the beginning of this conversation as without, that there's a space, it's lacking something. This rich man is lacking the presence of God right. around him, but more importantly, in him. Mike, so you also mentioned something at the end of that where there's a conversation on resurrection or yeah. something like that. Can yeah. you share more about the that? The last request was, no, Father Abraham, if somebody goes back and tells my brothers about this place, they will repent. And Abraham responds with, even if somebody resurrects from the dead, they will not respond. Which is interesting because Jesus is telling this story And he's the one that predicted his death and resurrection and then actually did it. He died and then rose again three days later. And so Jesus is emphasizing that the way and the truth and the life is here, that resurrected life is here, that new life is here, and you're missing it because you've locked yourself in this perspective. And Jesus would say, that's hell. Mike, thanks for sharing today on this conversation of how we're going to turn it over to your groups now take this moment to discuss and to look at some of the questions that are on the screen and we'll go ahead and see you next week